So now we move on to the hardware side of things. Um, now it's really important that we have good quality hardware because we are going to leave this device on connected to the internet in our homes uh, for a very, very long time. We're not going to actually turn it off. And so I'll take you through some of the hardware that is required here. The first thing that you'll need is a Raspberry Pi. Um, now the for those who aren't familiar with a Raspberry Pi, this is what it looks like. Um, and I'll take you through some of the key features. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Make sure that you get it with 4 gigs of RAM um, because the other models don't actually or aren't up to scratch. So you'll want a Raspberry Pi that has 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's really important. Now. You'll see here that there is an Ethernet port. Um, there are four USB ports, uh, two are blue and two are black. There is also a mini HDMI uh, slots. So that's two of them there, but we won't actually need those. Um, and so, yeah, you'll see here, it just says HDMI. These are the two that are there. Uh, we don't actually need to hook up a monitor, a keyboard, or a mouse. Um, now, the other thing that it also has is a USB type C uh, power su supply input. So that's that one there. And then on the back, there is a, uh, a micro SD card slot for a micro SD card. So this is what we call a single board computer or an SBC. And one of the SBCs that are on the market at the moment is the Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigs of RAM. Now there are concerns that um, this particular piece of hardware has some uh, closed sourced software embedded into the device. Now that is a valid concern. And so the MyNode um, developers have also got uh, or, or also support other boards like the ROC64 or the ROC Pro64. So you may wish to explore that. However, the majority of people have been going down the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 route, um, given that it is a little bit more accessible and cheaper. Um, and they are good quality boards as well. So, uh, and people have been finding a lot of success uh, with this project with a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM. The next thing that um, uh, you'll want is a nice case. Uh, a case is actually quite important uh, because it will, this particular case that I'm recommending is the Flirt case. Um, now this case actually helps with the cooling of the device um, and so what we want is to make sure that our device doesn't overheat. Um, every, I think, I believe that if this goes over 80 degrees Celsius, the, the performance of the Raspberry Pi significantly lowers itself. So what we want to make sure is that our devices are running nice and cool. And a Flirk case is my recommendation for this project. Um, so the the other thing that comes with the Flirt case is what's known as a thermal pad and four screws to screw it in place. So what we can do is just open up the, um, the packet that it's, that it's in, take out the uh, thermal pad, and it's, in, uh, it's got plastic on both sides. So on one side, I'm just going to peel off the um, plastic and I'm going to place this on top of the CPU of the Raspberry Pi 4, like so. And I'm going to take off the other side of the, um, the paste, or sorry, of the, on, the, on the pad. I'm going to uh, take the plastic off and I'm going to put this uh, onto and fit it into the, uh, the case, like so. 
it only goes one way, so um, you just paste it on top like that. Okay, and that should now sit securely in. And you'll see that all the grooves line up to all the outlets um, there. Then what we're going to do is just put the, put the back on. And the final thing that we need to do is just screw it back, screw it up. So we'll take our screwdriver and put the four screws in like so. Okay, fantastic. So now that is now nice and secure and in the case. Um, and that is now our Raspberry Pi. The next thing that I wanted to cover is um, what's known as a solid state drive, or rather a hard drive, or, or a drive that we can store all the information on. Now, a, uh, a solid state drive is the preferred method or, or the preferred uh, drive that you want, as opposed to a hard drive, uh, which is a little bit slower. So a solid state drive, the, the one that I um, would recommend that you get is the Samsung uh, 860 Evo, that is one terabyte in size. We want a one terabyte SSD uh, or a solid state drive. So that is the real recommended um, method um, or, or the recommended drive to use. Now, um, what we wanna do is connect this drive through to the Raspberry Pi. Um, now, what this drive will contain is the blockchain. And that is a record of everybody's uh, transactions, um, or all Bitcoin transactions since inception. So we want a nice big drive for this so that every day when the blockchain increases in size, we have enough space here. And at the moment, the, the go-to is the one terabyte. So we now need to somehow connect this thing through to our Raspberry Pi. And the way that we would do that is through what's known as an SSD caddy, which looks a little like this. Now, the way that this would work is you just slide open the caddy like so, and you take your SSD and you literally just line up, make sure that this is aligned with the grooves in through here and all you need to do is just slide it in place like so. Take the, uh, the cover back on, and that is now nice, snug, and secure. The other thing that you'll need, and that comes with the caddy, is the cable itself. So that one end will go in through to here, and the other end will go into the Raspberry Pi. So we'll take this and put this through into here, like so. And we'll take a um, the other end and plug it into a USB port of our Raspberry Pi. Now, you'll notice I made mention that there are two blue slots and two black slots. Um, if you've got an SSD, then you'll want to plug it into the black, one of the black um, slots rather than the blue. So this is an SSD, so we'll do it in, in through to the black. If you don't have an SSD and you're using a hard disk drive, then you might want to take advantage of USB 3. There are some driver issues with the USB 3 and the SSD, so just make sure that you plug it into the... Um, into the black port of the USB. So anyone will do, so I'll just plug it in through like so. And so that is now complete. Excellent. The other thing that we will also need is a micro SD card. Now the micro SD card will fit into the back of this device uh, like so, and we will just insert that in. But before we do that, we're going to do what's known as a process of um, flashing the SD card. And I'll do that a little bit later. So that's another piece of equipment that we will need. Now, the other thing that we will also need is an ethernet cable. Uh, one end of the ethernet cable will go into our 
uh, Raspberry Pi, like so. And the other end of the um, of the of the Ethernet cable will go into our router at home, into our network. So that is uh, a a free slot on our router at home that we will need to plug into. The other thing that you will need is the USB Type C um, you know, wall charger or wall connector, um, and so. This is a power adapter that I've just got via a USB cable and it just slots in through like that and then you can plug this um, this into the power of the Raspberry Pi like so. Okay, So that basically uh, is the hardware that is required. The other thing that you will also need uh, to flash the micro SD card is some form of micro SD card reader for your computer. Now some computers will already have a micro SD card, it just depends. So if you uh, don't have one then you'll also need an adapter. So the way that this would work is um, for the for flashing purposes I will put this into uh, the adapter like so and um, I will then put this into my computer. So for ready for flashing and we'll do that next. But hopefully uh, when it comes to hardware don't be cheap about it. This is something that will be uh, on in the background 24-7 in your home. So it's really important that you get uh, something that will hopefully last the test of time. Um, and so it's really important that you get the hardware right such that you have a good experience with MyNode. Okay, so just to be absolutely clear with what needs to be purchased, um, we need a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. And that is a nice kit here that you can potentially get. So it's a Model B 4 gigabyte starter pack and it's got the full um, uh, yeah, power supply, a micro SD card, um, and a case. Uh, we probably won't need that case. We'll, we'll get our own. Um, it's got a couple of heat sinks there as well. So this is a great starter pack um, and it contains pretty much everything that you need minus the case that I recommend. Um, so yeah, just make sure that your Raspberry Pi 4 is the 4 gigabyte version. Uh, that is critical. The next thing that you'll want is the Flerk case. This is an aluminium case. Uh, make sure it's for the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, that'll come in at around $41 or so. Um, so you can get one Flerk case uh, and that will, you know, yeah, for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and that will give it a nice um, cooling functionality to it. The other thing that you'll want is the one terabyte uh, Samsung Evo 860 SSD. Okay. Now, don't confuse this with an NVMe SSD. Uh, you just want this plain uh, Jane uh, SSD or a solid solid state drive. It looks like this, uh, and it comes in a packet like so. Make sure that it is one terabyte. Okay. So that's what you want. Okay. And finally, or just a couple of other things, I guess, um, just the micro SD card. Uh, yeah, so any of these reputable ones, you'll want a 16 gig one. Um, so something from SanDisk, something from Sans Samsung, uh, you can't really go wrong. So you'll get a 16 gigabyte um, one of those. These come in, well, this looks like it's a 32 gig. Uh, and that is 11 or $12, um, so fairly inexpensive, uh, and you can get even cheaper if you're going to go down to 16 gigs, so um, yeah, so $8 or so, okay? So that's something that you'll, uh, that you'll also need. And then we will also look into, uh, as part of the kit though, um, that we saw earlier, uh, that'll come with a power supply, so um, yeah, so that's something that you can purchase. Uh, 
and an Ethernet cable as well is something that you'll need. Um, so you can get those depending on the length of where you want to store the Pi versus the uh, router itself of, of where it is. So you can just grab one, uh, like a meter or whatever, it doesn't really matter, um, and that'll come in at like $3. Okay. Now the other thing that you will also need is a, oh well, potentially is a uh, micro SD card ad uh, USB adapter. Um, and what this will help you to do is uh, flash your SD card, which we'll do in a moment, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so effectively what this is, is just a small little USB device that you connect into your computer and you can put your SD card in through here or on the other side it's got a slot for the micro SD card itself and so it will kind of look uh, very similar to, to what's the picture that's going on down here where you just plug it into your computer um, and it will now read the micro SD card. So that's kind of what you want uh, if you don't already have an SD card reader um, for your, or that, that is already built into your computer. So make sure you get one of those as well. Now the next thing that you'll want is an SSD enclosure. So um, we'll just look for that enclosure. Um, and you can see something like this. Uh, it's USB 3 transparent 2.5 uh, inch SATA SSD uh, enclosure case. Um, and so we'll need one of these to plug into our uh, Raspberry Pi. And that will come with the cable as well, like so. And your SSD will sit in the caddy. Uh, and then the other end of that will go into the Raspberry Pi. So... Um, yeah, you'll want something like this. It's either a caddy or an enclosure um, that you can, yeah, use to to put your um, solid state drive into. Okay, so that's what it kind of looks like. That's yeah. Okay. So those that's the equipment that you will need um, just to be absolutely clear uh, on what is required. Now, anything that you deviate from here uh, will potentially uh, cause you issues or problems because I don't know. Um, so yeah, you can sort of, uh, you know, um, play it how you will. This is a kind of choose your own adventure, but this is the hardware that I have found success in and that others have also found success in. So uh, you can take our recommendations or you can kind of do what you have and see what happens. Um, but if you're just starting out, this is the place to start from. Uh, any other deviations, you're on your own.